it's indeed uh, my proud privilege to welcome such distinguished speakers for this episode of AI Pe Charcha. And uh, AI Pe Charcha, as uh, we all know, we started this initiative post Raise 2020, which uh, was done, the Responsible AI for Social Empowerment Summit that uh, NEGD and METI hosted last year, which saw participation of AI experts from all over the country and globally. We had uh, over five days, all aspects of AI related to healthcare, related to education, relating to skill development, relating to agriculture, relating to ethics and responsible AI were deliberated in great detail. The, even the, we had distinguished uh, speakers from Carnegie Mellon University who gave insights with regard to how language technologies can be, uh, can be further enhanced with the use of AI and deep learning. So those five days were phenomenal. We got a lot of learnings. So thereafter, it was felt that we need to continue the dialogue, especially with the university and academia and the government in order to see what all and in what ways we can accelerate the adoption of AI in government. And towards this objective, uh, we have been organizing this monthly events, AI Pe Charcha, in which we invite experts from industry, from uh, academia and the governments and practitioners who have been using AI for, for building applications and for building services, for improving access to services for most people in the country. So towards this, I think this is the sixth or the seventh episode that we are doing. So this uh, month we are showcasing the efforts made by Telangana in uh, digital transformation with the use of AI. Telangana has been a leader in several digital initiatives and more so in artificial intelligence, the policy that Telangana adopted, the kind of frameworks Telangana has built in, the kind of team that Telangana has and the kind of application that they have taken up for uh, implementation of AI projects. There is something to learn from all. So as part of the capacity building initiative under the National Governance Division, what we seek to do is to make these, uh, these examples available for our state emission teams, for IT secretaries, for, uh, for the IT leaders of various government media ministries and see to it that is there anything that we can quickly adopt, customize and roll out. Because that, the pace at which things are changing, we cannot keep on waiting for ideation and then uh, coming up with the draft reports, DPRs, and then go on to implementing. But then we will lose out, uh, lose out in this uh, the, in the in the race for adoption of AI-based solutions. So that's the whole background for AI Pe Charcha. And why AI? Because we all know that the way AI is impacting all our lives, uh, we cannot not look at the adoption of AI. So whether it's agriculture or building solutions, in fact, we have several such solutions which are built up for healthcare, whether it relates to tuberculosis scanning or breast cancer scanning or a diabetic retinopathy. Or recently there was an example of X-ray Setu in which a WhatsApp linkage was built with X-ray images. And that X-ray Setu was able to diagnose COVID-19 cases without the requirement of high-end RT-PCR tests. Similarly, the field of agriculture also, there have been huge applications and the advantage that we have in our country for rolling out these applications is the availability of immense amount of data. So once the data sets are available and the, once the data standards are laid out, using them, it will be easier to develop uh, AI-based solutions. What it does require, of course, is a policy framework for, for standardization of data and for policy framework for sharing of data sets with, uh, with the agencies which are implementing AI-based solutions. So under the National Program on AI, there's a huge in initiative that's going on as per the strategy on AI that was outlined a few years back by government. So the National Program of AI seeks to fast forward this, seeks to ensure that we will be able to create uh, create centers for excellence for uh, adoption of digital, uh, for AI-based technologies, the ICTAIs that are called, which will be set up in partnership with industry. Then there is initiative for building up supercomputing infrastructure in the form of Aravat, which is with the which the CDAC is taking up. And that facility will be available for governments as well as uh, companies building AI-based solutions to use it, leverage it, run their algorithms and refine their solutions. The data exchange platform, the data exchange policy that is being proposed under the, under the AI, National Program of AI, will be the most critical to it because very often data is available, but to make it accessible in the right format across and to make it shareable uh, with, the, with the concerned entities, that remains a challenge. So these are some of the challenges that we are looking at. Of course, the personal data protection bill and the, uh, and the norms with regard to sharing of data, once that is finalized, that will further fast forward the pace of adoption of AI. 
so what we need to brainstorm is to how to devise a strategy in which we learn from each other we learn from uh, state like telangana we learn from other states which have done it we learn from academia we have professor uh, bala subramanian from iit hyderabad we learn from industry experts who can share the best practices from internationally and then try to see what all we can do to fast forward adoption of ai so this is what uh, this is what i would like to say in the opening remarks there is a lot to hear from uh, jayesh ranjit sir rama devi varma konala snehanshu mitra and professor bala subramanian so i welcome all the participants who have joined in from across the country and across various ministries in government of india for for learning from them and i hope we'll have time for some questions and answers so that if there are any queries or any suggestions we will be able to address them those who have to ask questions you can keep on putting that in the chat box in the chat that is there on the on the on the call and the speakers may if, if they find time they are able to see it they will be able to respond it then and there so let's try to make it an engaging conversation which will help us in accelerating the adoption of ai in the country so thank you thank you for uh, and the telangana experts and industry experts for joining this thank you very much uh, good morning to fellow panelists special greetings to shri abhishek singh ceo of negd and uh, warm greetings to all the attendees first of all i would like to thank negd digital india and meti for giving uh, us an opportunity the state government of telangana an opportunity to speak about our uh, ai initiatives we are uh, immensely grateful uh, i would like to mention that uh, telangana has always been this is a young state new state as all of you would know formed only 7 years ago but right from day one of our existence we have had a strong belief that uh, technology is uh, something which will enable our state to really make a rapid advancement in uh, the overall socio economic development and uh, we have since then we have followed a particular approach which we call a multi stakeholder approach to build the ecosystem for any technology that we want to pursue and that holds good for ai also we have developed a very robust framework for ai which has followed a multi stakeholder uh, approach and uh, gradually a wonderful ecosystem is being built in uh, in our uh, state so what we do is that as i said we do it for various technologies so three things that i would like to mention one is that we create a policy a policy or a framework or an approach paper which shows the clarity of our thought what exactly do we want to do how do we want to do with whom do we want to partner so we of course uh, see what the national government is planning to do so in this case as abhishek ji mentioned the national uh, policy on ai is was the guiding document and we wanted to align ourselves with that but we also try to understand what are the best practices globally what are the other indian states doing what is the expectation of the industry what do the academy want to contribute and not to forget there are lots of, lots of startups today who are making a huge uh, transformative impact in the technology landscape so we also try to figure out what are their uh, ambitions their lines of activity so by taking inputs from everyone we prepare a framework so our framework was uh, uh, prepared uh, two years ago and uh, we have identified six pillars I, i'll speak very briefly about those pillars in a while but after the framework the next very important thing and in my opinion this is a key differentiator between telangana and other states see good policies good frameworks good documents are available everywhere i mean i i don't see any state which does not have great policies or great programs etc but lots of gap happens when uh, you have to translate that policy into action you have to translate that framework into action and one of the reason why that gap remains or the gap exists is that no one takes ownership of that policy or that program etc so in telangana we are very conscious of this fact and what we do is that for every initiative of ours that we intend to carry out we create an institution so in this case the institution that we have created is called uh, team the telangana artificial intelligence mission and uh, this has been uh, jointly set up between the telangana government and uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> nascom and uh, one of the speakers today later in the panel is mr snehanshu mitra from nascom and he will explain more about this partnership what have we done 
under the TM, what have we achieved and so on and so forth. So I'll uh, leave it for him to explain about TM. The next thing that we do is that we also bring in the best possible resources to run those institutions. Just having an institution for namesake on paper obviously is not going to help anyone. So my colleague will be joining you very shortly. She uh, is the director for emerging technologies, Ms. Uh, Rama Devi, and uh, she's the head of, uh, she's the spearhead of uh, TM along with her team. So we have recruited uh, people who will assist uh, uh, Ms. Rama Devi in uh, actually grounding all the TM uh, initiatives, projects, programs, etc. So these three things, the framework, the institution and the talent to run those institutions is something which is very defining, very signature about Telangana. And uh, of course, uh, what are the programs that we have rolled out, et cetera, et cetera. We will be speaking uh, briefly about uh, all that. But let me get back to the framework. I mentioned that we have prepared a very comprehensive uh, framework. So <clears throat> I, would like to, uh, I would like to tell you about the framework uh, that we have developed. As I mentioned, there are six pillars in that framework. And uh, Abhishek Ji alluded to some of the, uh, the important themes when uh, a country or a state has to roll out uh, AI initiatives. And some of those points that he alluded to are actually covered in uh, our, uh, our framework uh, pillars. And we have actually started lots of action on the ground re related to some of them. So one of the most important thing, and any AI practitioner will tell this to you, that uh, eventually, Everything boils, boils down to data sets and uh, data exchange. So in uh, our state, in the government, we have also made our efforts to ensure that uh, as many data sets as possible are uh, made available to public. They are also made available in a machine readable form. They are interoperable. And we have created a portal, a dedicated portal, which is called data.telangana.gov.in, where all these uh, data sets are, uh, are uh, there. And we have made an internal plan that in the coming three months, including this month of July, which is practically over, in the coming two months, we will ensure that as much of uh, data sets as possible are really pushed into our uh, portal. Then uh, Abhishek Ji referred to high performance AI computing. Of course, this is a plan uh, included in the national uh, policy also called IRAVAT. And uh, our uh, intention is also very well aligned very well aligned with it. So we also want to set up a high performance AI computing infra and uh, Professor Bal Subramaniam will be speaking later from representing IIT Hyderabad. So IIT has already got the first uh, high performance computing infrastructure and we are setting up the second one in another state university called uh, JNTU and eventually want, we want to do more. But this is an effort uh, which uh, we are rolling out with the help of the private sector. Another very important uh, responsibility for the government is to ensure the availability of talent and skill. I remember uh, there was a NASCOM event uh, last year, and I guess it was also spoken during RAISE that uh, Abhishek Ji referred to, which was about uh, how almost $500 billion worth of, uh, economic, $500 billion worth of economic value can be released using AI of the potential $5 trillion economy that our country can potentially aim for. But speaker after speaker after speaker pointed out that this can happen only if enough quantity and quality of talent is available. And obviously, no one else has to take direct responsible for, responsibility for this, except for the government. So this is something which is very important for us. We have an institution called TAS, the Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge. And uh, using TAS, we have rolled out multiple levels of skilling programs. Some of them are very basic just a basic two-day familiarization program. From that basic end to, to advanced courses of six months, nine months, one year. Till recently, I was the vice chancellor of the state-run university called JNTU, the Jawaharlal Nehru Technology University. And uh, uh, one of the key decisions which we took in my tenure was to make an AI course compulsory for every student. Whatever branch of engineering you are studying, you have to do a compulsory credit course on AI. So, this shows the kind of importance that we provide to talent, education, etc. We also uh, recognize that the government has a very, very critical role to play in setting standards for governance, ethics, privacy, because just as, uh, uh, as the theme was for race, responsible use of AI, there are also possibilities of misuse. 
and therefore the governments have to be very alert and have to really lead by example in setting the standards etc so that is one of the verticals Finance. that that uh, that we are uh, we are also focused on and uh, we also want to promote uh, more and more research more and more innovation so there are programs for startups so for example when i mentioned about tm tm has recently launched the rev up accelerator for ai startups at a mvp stage and uh, this is open to startups registered anywhere across india it's not a telangana focused program if you are a ai startup at an mvp stage do join the rev up accelerator program the applications are currently open and uh, i'm getting a very good platform to plug this program and the deadline is 31st july so please do uh, make use of it and most important responsibility with the governments also need to think about is actually demonstrating its sincerity towards ai by providing as many use cases as possible so enabling adoption of ai and uh, to focus on adoption what we did was something very very novel and very interesting we declared the whole of 2020 as the year of artificial intelligence so the entire year of 2020 of course it was a very bad year if you look at it from a global perspective we all suffered in this year so uh, but one of the bright spots for us in the government in that year was that it was uh, celebrated as the year of ai and of course there were some setbacks because of the prevailing situation but we were able to achieve at least 80 to 85% of the goals that we had set out and uh, during this year we forged amazing partnerships we started lots of projects and uh, uh, i will uh, leave uh, uh, this to my colleague uh, ms rama devi to speak about the projects the initiatives etc but again i am very happy that uh, we get this chance to tell about the telangana story and if state uh, representatives uh, are here on the call i'll be very happy to take this discussion bilaterally suppose you want uh, to also uh, emulate or replicate some of the things that telangana has done we'll be very happy to give you guidance share our documents share the framework explain to you about team and whatever else you know the entire know how is available absolutely free of cost and it will be our pleasure to help anyone else who wants to be helped so once again uh, greetings to all the participants panelists and thank you very much for inviting us morning deshan uh, and sir abhishek singh sir and representatives from the state governments and ngd team thank you for giving us this opportunity to showcase our experiences uh, of what we have done in telangana broadly categorize the whole presentation into three sections actually uh, you know while jay shanjan sir has already spoken about the emerging technologies wing and how we have built the ai ecosystem i'll speak mostly on the gavtech projects that we are actually implementing in ai while uh, you know the reason that we are uh, actually talking about the ai ecosystem also in fact you know uh, as uh, the mandate of the emerging technologies we actually focus on two aspects of each technology as jay shrijan sir has already mentioned it one is how do we actually develop the ecosystem how do we nurture the ecosystem for these technologies to grow and the second one is how do we adopt these technologies or leverage these technologies within the government either to increase you know uh, efficiency or better improve service delivery to citizens and so on so the last three years we have been focusing on these technologies of course ai we just started in 2018 uh, sorry 20 when we declared year of ai the other technologies of blockchain drones uh, cloud cyber security and we believe that a combination of technology uh, you know technologies are really going to change uh, or impact all the sectors that the government works with so jay shanjan sir has already spoken about the various policies you know that we bring in, in each of these technologies and we have also come out with our ai framework uh, which uh, outlines the foundational pillars that helps us drive uh, you know our objectives or overall vision so for each of these we have these institutions of excellence you know in each of those technologies for the blockchain we have blockchain district cyber security center of excellence Uh, eways we have a center of excellence this is again in partnership with meti uh, and the current one that uh, uh, sir has already spoken about is tm telangana ai mission which of course nehan she is going to speak a lot uh, in detail about this uh, well uh, just uh, just a glimpse on the kind of volume of data that's being generated across the world you know if you see 3.3 zettabytes you know we need to think about the zeros that are going to append to it and coupled to this is ease of storing the data you know 
the cost of data in India is about less than a dollar compared to US. US it's eight dollars per one uh, TB of data, I think, you know. So the cost is much, much lower in India. I think as a country, we need to actually capitalize on that. Of course, high uh, computing, you know, the cost of computing is going down. This is actually leading to the boom of AI. Well, as Jay Shanjan sir has already mentioned, we have declared 2020 uh, as the year of AI. And the key, uh, you know, element is partnership with academia, industry, and other government organizations is what is driving uh, the AI ecosystem in Telangana, you know, and helping us to achieve our vision. So these pillars, sir, has already spoken about these five areas that we have identified in the framework are healthcare, agriculture, mobility, education, and law enforcement. You know, while we have identified these three five areas, they are not cast in stone. We are exploring other areas. In a, a week or ten days, we are going to come up with a grand challenge on climate change and forestry. You know, what are the AI use cases for that? So our PM is actually Snehan Shu. We'll be talking about that. Uh, so. I mean, once we actually declared 2020 as the year of AI, yeah, it has set up a momentum, you know, of various initiatives and programs across the state against each pillar. So the first one, we enter into a partnership with World Economic Forum, where, uh, through which we have conceptualized what you call AI for AI. Again, each partnership is actually leading to some concrete, you know, initiative program or a project. And the partnership with Intel, uh, which Varma will be talking about, we set up a center of excellence in healthcare and mobility. Uh, then on the on the talent uh, development pillar, we work with Microsoft and we are also coming out with data annotation programs and so on. So, I mean, uh, there are a lot many, you know, events, uh, programs, initiatives that are actually driving the ecosystem. So this is what we have done over the last, uh, you know, one and a half year or so about we have organized 120 over events, workshops, webinars. We, again, we partner with various organizations, it's not just the government alone can do it, you know, these are all, all the organizations that you see on the screen, you know, with which we are partnering and working. So it's an amazing year that we have had on, you know, on AI. So while the year of AI concluded for us, but it kick-started the efforts and it set out a great momentum. Well, coming to the core part of it, Gautech projects using AI. Uh, while we have about 100, uh, sorry, 15 projects that are under various stages of implementation, uh, I'll be talking about only five key projects because of the lack of time. And these projects are spread across five sectors. You know, as I said earlier, agriculture. We have around uh, five to six projects that are actually on, on going on. I'll be talking about AI for AI and pest management, the top two. Mobility. While Varma will be covering, I'm skipping this. Law enforcement, uh, an interesting project that we have worked in the second one, crowd management tool, which I'll be just spending a few minutes on that. Uh, in healthcare, newborn risk assessment, you know, this is uh, ASHA workers, they actually visit each and every home to, uh, you know, assess the weight of a newborn baby. So we, uh, this is in partnership with Vardwani again, uh, we, it's a small, smart born, uh, smartphone based app, you know, wherein uh, by taking the photograph of the child, you should be able to actually measure the weight of the baby. So again, under the e-governance, uh, uh, we have a couple of projects which I'll be talking about. So real-time authentication, facial recognition, and so on. Uh, I think uh, this actually, you know, uh, I, uh, in the first week of July, we had a meeting of IT secretaries wherein Jason Jansen sir actually spoke about it, but some of you might have missed it, so I'm just touching upon it. So it's called, uh, as I said, you know, real-time digital authentication uh, of identity. So whenever you want to identify a particular person, when you're offering a government service or government benefits, three broad checks are performed. You know, one is the name of the applicant, the photograph of the applicant, and just look at the face, you know, to see if this person is so-and-so. So we actually decided, can these manual checks be replaced by using technology? So what we are doing right now is we used an AI-based liveness check to see if the person who is actually applying for a benefit is alive. This is very much required when you're actually dispersing pensions. So AI-based liveness check is done to assess, uh, you know, whether the photograph shared by an applicant is a live one. Yeah, the second one is, uh, uh, you know, once they actually submit a photograph, is it uh, one of the eligible beneficiaries or not, you know? So we pick up the... Uh, photograph from the database and compare it with what it has been submitted. This uses deep learning technology based image comparison. And the third one is name check. This is machine learning based demographic check. With these check, three authentication or identification mechanisms, 
we actually you know identify an individual and offer the required service this is a very successful project that the government of telangana has implemented for pensions for rta services and even for the e voting project that we are doing so these are three important projects that we have implemented the other one is crowd management it's a very interesting one uh, you know in india and more so in in all the states we have religious festivals we have political you know congregations that happen right so most of the time the police department authorities would like to know how many people are there on the site or on the place where this is happening so every time different numbers you know on the right hand you see the guessing name game goes on each department police department comes its own numbers the municipal corporation comes out with its own numbers there is no single number as such for them so we implemented a, a, a solution uh, you know with the help of a startup called aviros you know and it's a very novel method of procurement that we did we just uh, put uh, put this use case on a linkedin platform and we got so many responses we just you know evaluated and just picked the the right company it's a based out of delhi this particular startup a young startup company and if you see at the bottom here this changing colors this dynamically indicates where at a particular location you know uh, there is huge uh, uh, density of population that's beyond a certain threshold which immediately alerts the uh, authorities it could be police department officials so they can take uh, you know suitable actions whether uh, to divert the crowd or to close certain gates or to open certain entry entries and so on this we have implemented in two very popular uh, you know occasions one is we have a, a religious festival it's called medaram jatra where lakhs of people congregate in two days uh, where even the governor uh, who visited during that time she was very impressed by this you know uh solution the second one we had a test match uh in our uh, cricket ground with i think england or somebody i'm sorry i forgot the name so uh, these two places we have implemented while the accuracy was about more than around 80 to 90 percent is what we have achieved so moving on to next is uh the pest management crop uh this is an interesting project that we are implementing in six districts of telangana covering around 3000 villages Uh, cotton uh, is a major crop in telangana and one of the uh, you know pest it's called pink bollworm it infests the cotton crop a lot it damages the crop and by the time the farmer realizes uh, the damage is already done and he loses the you know produce so it is an ai based uh, you know application wherein the farmer will have to actually take a photograph of the moths collected here you see the second you know these are the moths uh, he takes a picture of that moths then he sends this photograph you know uh, through his smartphone the ai algorithm will actually count the moths and it checks if it has exceeded the threshold value if it exceeds eight moths on three consecutive days uh, then an advisories are issued to the farmer saying that you need to actually use this uh, you know pesticide or whatever and these advisories will be given by our universities agriculture university the agriculture university has validated this solution and all the advisories are designed based on their inputs is a very interesting we just started in this uh, you know season in six, uh, six districts which will be scaled up across later based on the success of this in fact niti ayog is also looking at uh, this particular uh, solution to take it to other states and the last one that i'm going to talk about is uh, ai for ai which is very close to our heart and which we are really you know implementing this with a lot of passion so this uh, ai for agriculture innovation we have launched this in the year of 2020 uh, we have launched this in the year you know 2018 during uh, our what you call during that covid season our minister has launched this uh, this is in partnership with the c for your world economic forum to transform the state of agriculture by deploying emerging technologies in a scalable inclusive and sustainable way this is our vision of ai for ai and all of us know the challenges that are being faced by farmers across india irrespective of any state you know and government of india is also coming out with so many reforms to see how a farmer can double uh, his uh, you know income so uh, and it's a very thorough project that we have actually undertaken uh, we have set up a core group which meets every friday without fail 10 to 11 o'clock 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock and this is headed by j sachinayana garu uh, sir who was former secretary of it we are working this under his guidance so the government of telangana where it and department agriculture department then agriculture university are partners to this with industry partners industry and academia so every week we, we, have, we have been meeting for since june 20 you know for the last seven or eight months and we have found four working groups uh, which is again represented by 60 partners across 
the industry uh, value chain of the agriculture. And we have also implemented one pilot with Sartshore. So getting into the details, you know, uh, farmer is always at the center for this initiative. So we have identified five personas, you know, where mark, farmer at the center and markets, because at the end of the day, farmer has to sell his produce to the markets, right? And government, government need to come up with the right policies, you know, frameworks for the agriculture. And you have the agri-tech innovation, innovation ecosystem on the top and agriculture industry ecosystem. So there are about 26 value nodes that we have identified, which would create impact, you know, across the agri-value chain. So based on this, three working groups worked across three uh, you know, categories of value chain, intelligent crop planning. When a farmer just starts to plan his uh, uh, you know, crop, so what are the various frameworks, what are the use cases that can actually you know, make a difference, uh, can bring a change or address certain problems? That's what we did in this. So if you see at the bottom, we have identified 30 use cases spread across the value chain of agriculture, right from the point one, when a farmer starts planning a crop to the harvesting, you know, to the time he sells his produce. So uh, at the bottom, if you see, these are some of the use cases at every stage we have said, where technology can be used. It could be either blockchain, AI, IoT, you know, and data, satellite data, drones. We've evaluated all the technologies. As I said, AI, AI in combination with blockchain, with IoT, is going to solve, uh, you know, a number of problems in agriculture. And the last one, if you see again, data governance, which is the heart of everything that we do, you know, using technology. So it has to be data-driven agriculture. So there's certain use cases again. So as part of this, we came up, we conceptualized what you call Sago Bagu. In, it's a, in Telugu. Uh, direct translation is a bit, uh, you know, difficult because it's in a, a local dialect. Sago means cultivation, Bagu means good, you know, but the cultivation, but the literal meaning is always not right. So uh, the impact that we intend to create uh, by this pilot is about 1,000 farmers spread across 1,000 villages, and we intend to carry out this, uh, you know, uh, across four seasons. So the key difference uh, uh, in this is, you know, uh, while we have been doing a number of pilots, uh, as I said, you know, pest management solution, but one key differentiator in this is, in a particular for a particular crop, say if you take cotton or turmeric, so across the value chain of a particular crop what are the areas where we can bring in technological interventions so that's the idea here you know entire life cycle uh, crop mate what is that we can actually do with technologies what we're trying to you know do through the sagu bagu project well uh, these are the project ob objectives you know how do we increase productivity production and profitability to the farmer and how do we bring in environmental sustainability reduce you know fertilizer consumption natural resources, water, power, and optimum utilization of resources, and of course, bring in transparency into the entire process. Well, uh, the key thing for this is we, uh, the government need to create an enabling environment, you know, so that is one, and which in turn stimulates the growth of agri-tech services, uh, you know, using that enabling environment. So on the right-hand side, if you see, we have the enabling environment, uh, you know, uh, the, Aggregate setting up an aggregate data exchange, which Abhishek Singh Ji has already you know, spoken about, and Ajay Shanjan sir also. This is a very, very critical part of what we are going to do. The second one is setting up an A box, agriculture box. It's not like a sandbox that we see in, in the fintech space. It's something different, which I'll explain it uh, right now. So this is the enabling environment that we are looking at. You know, it's an uh, overarching model that we reference model that we are looking at. This is based on the inspiration from UPI, you know, uh, uh, like uh, we call here is Unified Farmer Service Interface. There we have uh, Uniform Payments uh, Interface, right? So you, here we have a similar kind of interface. So with data providers on the right hand side, you know, all the data through APIs will be made available to this interface. On the, uh, you know, right hand side, if you see, you know, all the ecosystem players, agri-tech innovation, data consumers, starting from startups to research companies, to system integrators, to, you know, the entire ecosystem will be making use of this whole thing. I'm not getting into the details. And this is the agri-data exchange that we are actually going to, you know, uh, uh, build in the next two, three, uh, three months. We already have a data portal, open data policy. We have certain data sets. We are actually refining those data sets so that, they'll be amenable to AI algorithms, al algorithms 
will be able to consume them directly without the need for every company to pre-process it. A lot of when we work with startups, they come and tell us a lot of their effort and time goes into, you know, cleaning up the data, making it, uh, you know, in a form that is consumable by the AI algorithms. So that's what we'll do on the left hand side, all the data, whatever the government data says that are first we identify in different sectors, including this is, we, we're going to start with agriculture. That's the reason we are naming it as Agri Data Exchange. So we have, a, 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 as uh, Jay Shanjan sir was mentioning, you know, McKinsey report has identified that if you unlock 15 sets in the agriculture sector alone, it could uh, create around, you know, or contribute around $60 billion worth of, you know, potential uh, to the economy. So we are actually working on that at a very, you know, fast pace. So once, uh, and that will make, of course, you know, all the, uh, data policies, uh, they'll be put in place and, uh, you know, uh, user management, all the required protocols, policies will be put in, governance mechanism will be put in place for that data. So it is a very important project that we are about to start and we have a team in place, we are already working on it. The second component that we talked about is agriculture box. When a startup or a company comes to us with a certain innovative solution, we actually identify the solution, validate it, and then, you know, uh, do the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, offer the necessary support for implementing the solution. So it's a kind of a process that we already have, but we want to institutionalize that, bring in processes and you know, kind of a method to all the bandits that we are currently facing. So the first is front-end enablement is being done by the agriculture department when a startup comes, you know, front-end delivery channels, because that's one of the key requirements for any company to offer their services to farmers. Um, so that will be enabled by the agriculture department. The second domain knowledge and business model. As I said earlier for the pest management solution, in fact, the agriculture department is giving all the necessary technical uh, advice for us in terms of, you know, uh, how much pesticide, at what time, you know, and moth calculations, statistical models, that everything is being brought by the research university. And ITNC department is playing a very critical role in terms of enablement of all these stakeholders. That is the number one thing. Second. Of course, technologically, you know, the protocols, the policies, the standards we bring in, IPR co-creation and all that will take care of it. And finally, policy, policy enablement by the agriculture department will happen once we have the... So this is a kind of a agricultural box wherein companies can offer the solutions and um, uh, to the governments, you know. So, and we have, we are looking at a public-private partnership and we came up with a new word called public-private cooperation, wherein initially for the pilot, we want the companies to work on pro bono. Uh, you know, because these companies will be funded by certain funding agencies. So the pilot, they would be actually working on um, uh, on a pro bono basis. For the scale up, the government will actually, you know, uh, uh, take it up and uh, on a commercial basis. So uh, as I said, these are the various stakeholders, you know, the farmer at the center, we have, you know, everybody, government of Telangana, our state government, the development partners, who bring in the you know infrastructure for us, the startups who bring in the ag tech solutions, the agri tech companies, they have existing lamp, uh, platforms which they can offer it to us. And we're not looking at one single you know, a company that's going to do it. We're looking at multiple partners coming in and offering the solutions, agri companies, input companies to marketing, to logistics, and insurance, of course, is a, one of the uh, you know, fastest growing area in the agriculture sector and collect, uh, you know, FPOs and so on. This should cover the entire ecosystem of agriculture is what we are looking at. And we are releasing the UI in the next couple of days, most probably in about two weeks time to actually select a project implementing partner, PIP, project implementation partner, PIP, that's what is calling, we are naming it. And uh, what, what is that we are doing it? We have identified uh, in the Kharif three, pro, uh, three crops, cotton, chili, turmeric, these are very important crops for Telangana. So the rabi season groundnut and bengal gram and we identified where the, uh, the districts where this will be implemented and at least five use cases in each of these crops across the value chain the pip will have to implement multiple crops multiple seasons multiple geographies and uh, uh, across different crop cycles and how are we going to do it as i said pip will actually onboard a consortium of partners. He may not have one single solution, right? There are a couple of solutions, a combination of solutions that need to be implemented. A blockchain for traceability, you know, IoT sensors for your uh, weather management or climate, soil testing, AI algorithms for your, you know, uh, what you call crop estimation and so on, a combination of technologies. So this PIP at the bottom, if you see, he will bring in all the consortium partners and a funding agency right now, you know, like it could be 
these funding uh, bill and melinda gates usaid and so on these funding agencies will be funding uh, for this pilot alone i'm saying for the scaling up again it will be the government and if you look it this is not really visible on the right side but just to give you a sense of it you know what is that we are doing see if you look at the top this is the value chain of turmeric so right from the point uh, uh, you know time of land preparation then uh, the farmer plants uh, then mulching happens and harvesting so across these stages what are the various technologies that uh, the pip should bring in is what we are looking at so in 10 days time from now i think the ui will be released and we will be onboarding a partner in a month's time so this is a very important project that we are all waiting for uh, so uh, this is my last slide again i thank negd for giving us this opportunity uh, you know for presenting our initiatives in telangana uh, thank you uh, thanks for inviting us today to share our views uh, and i'll probably build on the observations that have already laid out by mr ranjan and ms ramadevi uh, considering the amount of time available it take about 10 minutes to lay out uh, or introduce telangana ai mission to you it be polite to leave some time at the end for q and a so telangana ai mission was conceptualized as an outcome of state's vision to be a front runner in artificial intelligence both in terms of developing solutions for the world and also creating social outcomes for the state through by leveraging a robust innovation ecosystem uh, we established it in um, partnership uh, you know between government of telangana and nascom under the aegis of 2020 year of ai so when we sat down to decide on the strategic outcomes that it is likely to create we focused on three key pointers one is the whole aspect around innovation and entrepreneurship the second one was around skilling and capacity building and third one was in terms to uh, in terms of positioning hyderabad as a a global ai hub and uh, how we desire to sort of operationalize or execute the mandate would be through developing an ecosystem for innovators to establish telangana as the base uh, we uh, curate and and execute very focused training around data science and ai uh, we have been working on creating data exchange platforms uh working on setting up uh, high performance computing infrastructure for the state the innovators that work with us uh, very actively work on uh, you know creation of data sets in, in areas that have been designated and consistent with the grand challenges in the domains that we catered to and also a range of workshops that we conduct from time to time for the developer community we have just completed about a year uh, very very excited by the the journey the progress and the feedback that we have received uh, you asked me to specifically comment uh, on two or three things and uh, in the first one that i would like to touch upon was is the aspect of grand challenges and very early into our operations and we were guided by telangana's ai framework as well which talks about leveraging ai for social innovation we launched a grand challenge uh, in, in agriculture and agriculture happens to be one of the priority areas for us and in through a consultative process of of uh, getting in touch with key stakeholders subject matter experts research centers the agri university and also the department of emerging technologies we formulated a relevant set of use cases uh, relevant for telangana among which uh precision farming uh real time price discovery and formal lending using output backed credit risk assessment were the three use cases that we came up with uh we advertised it to the the entire innovation ecosystem uh and and each team was given about 6 weeks to work on this use case uh, we also uh, put together a highly experienced jury that comprised of government representatives tech professionals uh agriculture subject matter experts uh and and a whole lot of other people that evaluated the entries on a, on a range of criteria including the innovation quotient that these solutions brought in the operational scalability of these ideas some of them are very very conceptual and do not have the the potential to to be scaled up so that was one of the key considerations that we had what kind of road map for implementation of pilot would they end up recommending uh the unique value proposition Uh, the social impact that they had in mind for these use cases, etc., were carefully curated. Uh, this was our first attempt, but we were very happy to see that over 15 innovators participated from across the country. 
um, again, we were very, very clear that uh, the quality of outcomes will be very specifically influenced by the quality of data that would make available. And hence, we put a good amount of effort in trying to curate the data sets, ensuring that it is of a certain acceptable quality. And what happened as a consequence was we had, uh, you know, five very strong entries come through to the final stage. And eventually we announced uh, the, the entries or submissions from CRAC Kolkata and RMSIs as winners. Now, Mr. Ranjan was alluding to this a little while back, but the way we at Telangana are differentiating ourselves is to ensure that some of these recommendations do not sort of uh, get stalled at, a, at ideation or a conceptualization stage. And right now, what we're doing is we are working on operationalizing the, the solution or the recommendations that came through the grand challenge. And uh, we are executing it, it through a controlled pilot. We have identified a set of crops. We've identified a set of districts within Telangana. And we are trying to, over the next six months, uh, execute the recommendations, like I said, and then see how much of it is really scalable. And if it is scalable, then of course, we would look to sort of make this in information available at the solution available to as many districts as possible. Uh, that was the, the agriculture grand challenge. Uh, Clearly, we are very motivated by the initial success that we could find in this grand challenge. And then we're in the process of launching a similar activity very shortly in the areas of mobility and environment. These are two other areas that we are very, very keen on working on. Also, you know, we recognize as a, that it is a fact that AI research and innovation work together very, very uh, closely. As a matter of fact, AI research acts as a catalyst to innovation. What we are also doing on creating research cohorts on artificial intelligence, and these are again guided by the priority sectors that have been laid out in uh, the AI framework. Uh, we are working with certain academic institutions, both local as well, uh, as, well as global, and also industry and enterprise partners uh, to be able to come together and then support research efforts uh, and the kind of outcomes that we'd like to produce over here would be identification of the right kind of uh, you know, research areas, understanding what are the prevailing best practices globally uh, relative to those areas, uh, what kind of products and solutions can be developed, what kind of intellectual property can be generated, how can we provide for more publications and citations, et cetera. And each of these cohorts will then be mentored by industry specific researchers, people from, uh, you know, uh, the enterprises community, people from the startup community who have seen, been there, done it all, done it successfully, learned from their failures, et cetera. That is the kind of program that we are drafting right now on the research front. Finally, uh, on the rev up uh, acceleration program that we have uh, currently launched, and it goes on floor uh, in the month of August itself, uh, the whole idea is to try and create a very vibrant, uh, innovative ecosystem and would we'll try and you know, operationalize this once again through this RevUp Startup Program. The RevUp Startup Program basically focuses on growth stage AI startups. Through NASCOM, of, of course, we you know, bring in a lot of experience for understanding the fundamental needs of growth stage startups. They have a viable sort of a product, probably a couple of you know, paying customers. They have a certain rudimentary understanding of sales marketing, they understand how to create a support system, but they are also very focused on seeking measurable growth, whether it is in term of, terms of increasing the revenue base, uh, accelerating you know, uh, their outreach to customers, acquiring market share. Uh, they are also investing heavily in, in, in technologies so that their aspirations keep pace. And through this RevUp program, what we're doing is we're trying to engage about 200 odd very focused AI startups, uh, specific, technologies such as uh, NLP, computer vision, uh, products that are built out of deep learning, machine learning foundations are the kinds that we would like to sort of partner. Uh, what is it that we'll try and provide as an outcome? There are five or six things that we are trying to provide for. Fundamentally, growth stage startups, like I was suggesting, are very, very desirous of increasing their industry connect 
Uh, that is one area that would be absolutely trying to help them out with. Uh, they are looking to not just getting funded, but they're looking at strategic partnerships, and which is something that we are trying to facilitate through multiple investor roundtables. We are also bringing to them a set of highly qualified mentors. Uh, we are also helping them with uh, with tech credits, whether it is access to GPU, compute infrastructure, uh, also getting them introduced to markets abroad. And finally, IP harvesting. Now, we would understand that law, you know, uh, intellectual properties is, a, is an area where innovators would need to be constantly educated, coached. And, and this is where we are trying to bring in techno legal experts to guide them, guide them through the whole process of creating intellectual property. So, Vanali, this is something that I wanted to sort of uh, suggest and introduce. Uh, uh, Telangana AI mission, just leaving the audience probably with two or three important things. Uh, our foundational success has been very, very encouraging. And we are, we are, we are absolutely looking forward to build on uh, this initial success over the next two years, but very happy to take any questions on the Telangana AI mission, if there are any from the audience. I think over the last four speakers, Abhishek ji, uh, Jayesh Anjanji, Ramadevi Garu, and Snehan Shu, right? touched on a few on the topics, right? And, and I'll expand on that. So the center is called INAI, right? And, and talk about the genesis, right? Over the past four or five years, right? We've been uh, discussing and having a lot of conversations with both the central governments and state governments and academia, right? As AI sort of exploded, right? Especially in the consumer sector, yeah, right? You've seen a lot, of, uh, a lot of applications of AI, right? As this is happening and we saw developments in other countries, like say in the US and China, for example, where the efforts have been, like say in the US, the efforts have been mostly led by the commercial sector, right? The Googles, Microsofts, and uh, those. And if you see China, for example, right, the effort is led mostly by the government, right? So uh, unlike those uh, things right here, what we wanted was really a collaborative effort between the government, the industry and the academia, right? And then work on uh, issues that could really have a population scale impact in our country, right? So that was a thought process and Abhishek ji talked about that as ICTAI, right? We had lots of conversations on that in, in the national AI policy, right? As a result of all that, right? Uh, so we started this center, which is essentially a, uh, a public private initiative, right? Uh, with uh, a triple IT Hyderabad as the principal academic partner that we've been working for a long time. And the Telangana state government is the uh, patron, right? Uh, uh, from, this, from the government side, right? And Intel brings in all the industry experience uh, and technology architecture and, and actually you know, uh, conceptualizing the end product from the research stage, right? And we have two domains that we're focused on, right? So far, we heard about agriculture uh, and a lot of other domains, right? The two domains we chose were healthcare and smart mobility, right? Uh, part of the reason was, you know, we, we already had some significant work in smart mobility at Triple ID Hyderabad and healthcare because we wanted to focus on things that would have impact on population, right? So these are the two we chose, right? And in uh, healthcare, we have domain partner and smart mobility, right? Right now it's still open. So if anybody on the call who wants to uh, come and talk to us on the smart mobility, right? And, and then, then they can. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's not about external collaboration, right? The center also sort of, uh, you know, uh, combines all the internal efforts in IIIT also among various departments. So, so that all the applied AI initiatives come under one umbrella, right? Uh, we have a technology incubation hub that's funded by uh, DST uh, that focuses on uh, data related solutions and uh, data sets. Right? That's also an integral part of this center. Now, uh, you know, before I get into a little bit details on the objectives and what projects we're doing on as part of the center, right? Just a little bit on uh, you know, how things have changed over the past maybe 10 years in terms of the development, right? Uh, if you see previously, the focus has been sort of on the compute side, right? As if, you know, more and more compute getting available every, you know, one, 1.5 years. 
But in the past four or five years, uh, the focus has shifted to data, right? Now everybody talks about the amount of data that's getting generated every day and data doubling every year, right? What has this led to is how developers are developing applications and solutions. I mean, traditionally we used to start out with a, okay, this is a theory and then you sort of, you know, codify that theory and write a program and then actually test out that program. But now that the paradigm completely changed, if you see most of the uh, development happening, it starts out with taking data and then, you know, you know, put some algo on it and then come up with a solution, right? So data has become integral, right? As you heard from many speakers and as you probably know yourself, right? From all the from all the things you see out there, right? So this is this is one key aspect, right? Uh, but if you see most of the startups, right? Uh, as Asnehan should talk and others talk, right? Although everybody wants data, quality data has been a big problem, especially open source quality data. So as part of the uh, center, right, we said we'll do uh, three major things. The first thing is in, in these two domains, healthcare and uh, smart mobility, right? Uh, annotated and curated data sets, right? Uh, for every startup right now in these two domains, right? Uh, this, is a, this is a big issue. They go get data, but they have to spend a lot of time, even after they get raw data, annotating and, and uh, curating, right? So this is, this is especially if you look at, uh, India, right? There are data sets outside India for Western populations, but for some of the specific areas we're looking at like cancer and diabetes and TB, the Indian, uh, good Indian data sets are not available in open source. So that's one area. The second one is, uh, well, once you get this data and curate it, you need to have a, a platform to, to share it, right? With all the people in an open and secure manner. Again, if you look at uh, healthcare, right, uh, you need to have some sort of secure, uh, secure federated learning uh, as part of your uh, platform, so that you know you can share uh, data with uh, with startups and other researchers, while also keeping privacy and security in mind. Okay. So that's the second aspect. So tools and frameworks, right, to share the data. Right? The third one is actually developing algorithms and tools using all this stuff. Okay, you collected data, you have good data, now what, right? You need to have some outcomes and solutions based on this that are actually having an impact on the population. Right? So these are the three major vectors, I would say, under which we are organizing our programs. Right? So we do all these things and then we open it up for researchers and startups, right? That can take this and they can build their own solutions on top of this thing, right? With this, let me get to the uh, the two uh, domains, right? Healthcare and uh, and smart mobility, and specifically what we're doing. Right? Uh, I'll, I'll skip this. Go to the next one. I'll go to the smart mobility, right? First thing, data sets, right? If you see the data sets, uh, right? So this is something that we've been doing uh, uh, almost for the past three four years at Triple IT. Uh, where we have put together something called Indian driving data set. Uh, if you see in the domain of advanced uh, driver assistance and uh, autonomous driving solutions, uh, each company that is developing these solutions is almost you know, sort of collecting their own data. Uh, and there's not much outside there, right, in the open source. And even whatever data is available out there in open source, it's essentially in Western environments, right? Mostly data collected in US, Europe, or uh, other areas, right? So as far as India is concerned, right, there wasn't any. So we spent a lot of time uh, over the last three, four years, right, and put together this uh, data set. So this is the only big open source data set for Indian driving conditions. And we have a big user base right now using this uh, data set to develop uh, algorithms. And we continue to, uh, Right, add new dimensions to this data set is the first one. Right? Second one is uh, the algorithms and the toolkits that are uh, done on top of this, right? So here actually we're putting together a platform where the same uh, equipping a car with lots of sensors, cameras, lidars, and all this, and we'll be unveiling this soon. But we're having conversations with both the TIM and the Telangana government to, to sort of, you know, uh, have a challenge around this thing so that it's available to a uh, lot more researchers and, and we have a time-bound challenge so that we can have solutions out there based on the platform. 
and the top one is uh, actual uh, solutions based based on all this thing right what impact would have out there uh, in, in the in the society so here we actually have specific pilots and programs that we're doing uh, that are aligned to vision zero so vision zero is the uh, government's vision to reduce the number of accidents and uh, reduce the uh, number of lives lost uh, on our roads uh, this is actually uh, one metric where we're on top of the world but would rather be on the bottom of the world right in terms of number of accidents and lives lost on the roads so here we actually have a lot of good technology right uh, intel has a company called mobileye right which has developed a lot of uh, good solutions just based on camera you put a camera on the dashboard and the camera a lot of ai solutions are built into the camera based on the camera it can give you advanced warning of a like a forward collision right or a side collision those one two seconds of advanced warning can help a driver take take action right so we're actually uh, already started active pilots and uh, planning one in telangana right? so that this all this technology can actually result in right uh, having a real impact uh, on the society especially in this in this one right in, in avoiding accidents and saving lives so that's that's a big program uh, uh, right as part of the center right then let's go to uh, healthcare right uh, this again we uh, after uh, we looked at uh, lots of areas again this is a broad thing we can do lots of things right but we wanted to be focused and uh, uh, select four major areas that we want to work in right? the first one is public health uh this this is a big area for us uh and also if you look at you know from the data sets from the solutions and actual impact on the ground right the first thing is if you see our public health system uh in terms of the reach we have a lot of infrastructure in terms of the phcs and the sub centers but in terms of the coverage it's still not high right only if you, if you take a phc right only 10 to 15% of the population covered under that phc actually get uh, uh, you know visit the phc and and take uh, take uh, medical help right so this is where we can actually uh, use technology and uh, right using the same resources cover a lot more people right that's one aspect the second aspect is actually uh, uh, data sets uh, in this domain right if you see a lot of the data sets in healthcare today they're all of sort of what we call disease data right uh, a lot of the studies in this area are hey i can help say a radiologist uh, you know look at an x ray much faster right or look at a ct scan much faster right so those are all sort of helping the doctors be more productive of people who are already having the disease but what the real impact is if you can actually predict uh, based on the data sets right if you can predict that this person is going to have you know get cancer or tb or diabetes say 3 to 4 years advance right that's a real impact that's when you can have a real impact so to do that kind of stuff you need to get data sets of uh, people who haven't had the disease yet so that you can correlate between these data sets of people who have the disease and correlate with data set people who haven't had the disease and then come to these algorithms right so that's that's one area of focus in the public health right having collecting that kind of data sets the uh, second one is uh, just based on what i said right uh, cancer right uh, this is uh, other than diabetes and heart diseases this is one big uh, you know uh, one big area right where it's growing and then any impact we can have in this area right will actually save lives right uh, there are multiple things we are looking at but in a couple of areas we actually already uh, started uh, on ground implementation with couple of ngos in telangana uh, uh, the first one is oral cancer uh, just to, just to give a brief idea about it right this is if you can do proper screening of oral cancer uh, you can actually uh, detect it lot earlier and it can be be completely be cured with simple solutions so the whole point is about screening and again uh, you can't do large scale screening because you don't have enough cancer specialists to go around and screen this is where we are developing the solution just based on simple camera right so that the nurses and technicians uh, 
can go out and using the camera take the images and the AI algorithm can help them right uh, screen uh, much larger population than they would do otherwise uh, the third one is mental health again uh, even prior to covid right uh, this this was probably a lot bigger issue than we think it was but especially with covid uh, we this this is going to be a lot bigger problem down the line especially among the younger population so we're looking at a couple of projects where we can actually look at the habits like say their music listening habits or social media habits take those as a pointers of early depression and mental health problems so so we're, we're actually looking at a couple of projects uh, using that kind of data and the last one is drug discovery right uh, this i won't talk too much because you know uh, there is there is some work underway and we'll, we'll make a public announcement sometime and this here is it's a little bit ambitious right? if you see drug discovery over the past four or five years earlier what used to be say 10 to 15 years of timeline essentially got now compressed into four to five years using ai based techniques right? and it can get compressed a lot more uh, but on this one again right uh, there are data sets out there but the kind of data set that uh, we are working on right now is sort of disease agnostic and uh, which doesn't have any biases that can be used by uh, uh, we, we plan to put it out in open source which can be used by a lot of companies to develop solutions a little bit ambitious but uh, we'll see how that goes uh, these are the two areas uh, one last thing and then i'll wrap up right this is a, more about the process right here we are actually doing collaboration in among multiple things right government industry and uh, academia right and, and other startups too right uh, I'll, I'll i'll touch on a couple of things right the, the whole point of this institute is actually uh, build solutions right take it from research using the ai technologies and put it out in the market right so there are a lot of considerations that we did right at the beginning of forming this uh, institute and, and we, we keep doing this thing which is about Typically, research takes a lot longer, right? I mean, just, just think of years. But you know, we want to do something in quarters, not years, so that we can put something out there. Right? And also, in terms of you know, uh, actually thinking about the end product and the end consumer in mind. Okay, I'm going to develop this algorithm, right? But how am I going to actually get it out into the market so that it can be deployed in the field, right? So we have all these considerations in the mind so that whatever we're developing as part of the research right, actually gets out into the market and has a real impact. Okay, that's pretty much right. So our focus is in healthcare and smart mobility and actually developing solutions that can have a real impact out there in the society. Good morning, uh, everyone. And uh, thank you very much uh, for this kind invite and uh, opportunity to share research uh, ai research at uh, iit hyderabad uh, and to present perhaps the academic dimension of uh, telangana's uh, ai efforts so thank you very much to all the organizers and specifically the uh, dignitaries from government of telangana so as most of you know iit hyderabad is one of the second generation iits that was started in uh, 2008 and over the uh, short lifespan of about 12 to 13 years has uh, has gained reputation as one of the top uh, institutions in the country. And one of the unique efforts of IIT Hyderabad has been in the space of artificial intelligence. And uh, unlike many other institutions in the country, which have uh, centers in AI that bring together expertise from different departments, from different spheres of life, uh, IIT Hyderabad took a conscious decision to uh, start a department of artificial intelligence two years ago, about two and a half uh, uh, years ago. And um, maybe let me start with motivating why a need for a separate department of education in artificial intelligence itself. Uh, historically, if you see, AI has always been considered a sub branch or a subfield of computer science. And scientists and researchers and engineers that work in AI have been produced by the computer science department in different institutions across the world. How in the last few years, uh, AI has started having an existence of its own today to even apply AI in say, like what the previous speaker mentioned in say healthcare or mobility requires significant expertise of the domain as well as the technologies underlying AI itself. 
So we recognize this and realize that AI is soon becoming a horizontal across all disciplines. Today, for someone to know AI from a holistic perspective, they need to know topics in computer science, of course. They need to know topics in electrical engineering, like signal processing, topics in mathematics, which form the uh, foundations of AI, uh, topics in mechanical engineering, such as robotics and control theory, topics in biomedical engineering, like computational neuroscience, topics in liberal arts, like AI and ethics, especially for something like responsible AI. I think uh, exposing students to AI and ethics early in their education is going, going to be a significant uh, uh, impact uh, creator for generating students that can actually be industry ready and also uh, teach perspectives of say design from human computer interfaces in AI and so on and so forth. So the Department of AI effectively at IIT Hyderabad strives to provide this holistic perspective uh, from the perspective of both research and uh, pedagogy. So I'll probably briefly try to spend, uh, I know I have a limited time, briefly try to spend the remaining minutes on talking about some of our efforts, both on the research front as well as on the pedagogy front. And as uh, many of you may know, IIT Hyderabad was also known for starting the first uh, bachelor's in AI program in the country uh, two years ago. When we started it, uh, we think we were third in the world after MIT and uh, uh, CMU. And we've also had the opportunity to influence many other institutions across the country in creating curriculums to offer similar programs. I'll talk about this uh, a little later as we go to. Uh, so there are about 25 to 30 different faculty uh, across different departments in IIT Hyderabad that are affiliated with the AI department. Uh, so we have faculty that uh, work in areas of deep learning, machine learning, Bayesian data analysis, computer vision, speech processing, natural language processing, predictive analytics, high dimensional data analysis, AI and design, robotics, AI and high performance computing, AI, IoT and communication, computer architecture for AI to create, create embedded AI solutions and so on and so forth. And the purpose is to expose students in the department that get enrolled with the department and get enrolled with programs in the department to get perspectives of all of these different facets of AI uh, because it's very difficult to say where one ends and where one begins in today's world that we all uh, live in. Uh, in terms of specific uh, projects that I can highlight uh, that uh, faculty, that my colleagues and faculty at IIT Hyderabad have been uh, involved in, uh, there have been several application domains that these projects have spanned. Uh, one of the efforts has been in security and surveillance. In fact, uh, one of the faculty at IIT Hyderabad works with the Hyderabad police, in fact, specifically the traffic police, uh, to be able to analyze video feeds from the CCTV cameras so there have been efforts to automatically detect whether a person is wearing helmet or not. In fact, there have also been efforts in trying to find out whether uh, from CCTV camera footage, can you find out if a chain snatching event has happened and be able to alert authorities on the event and so that it can be intervened on in a reasonable time frame. Uh, we've also had efforts similar to what uh, uh, all the previous speakers mentioned, especially Mrs. Ramadevi mentioned. Uh, we have uh, part of the efforts on AI for agriculture with the Telangana government, as well as we have some independent uh, projects with the Telangana State Agricultural University, where uh, we use AI for what is called plant phenotyping using drone video footage, so on and so forth. We also have faculty working on AI for healthcare, uh, partnering with institutions like LV Prasad, I Hospital, Asian Institute of Gastro Gastroenterology, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, in fact, IIT Hyderabad also similar to the Department of AI also has a unique department called the Department of Climate Change, uh, which offers programs in climate change. And there are faculty there to uh, trying to use AI techniques for climate change and climate understanding, which I'm quite sure all of us know is a very important topic uh, at, a global, at a global level. There are faculty who work on e-commerce, such as the recommendation systems that you see, say with Flipkart or Amazon or similar systems. Uh, we have faculty in the physics department that use AI for astronomy and aerospace. In fact, uh, we have faculty who are part of the Large Hadron Collider project in Switzerland, uh, where, where also machine learning and AI is used to understand the data that comes out of the system. Uh, we also have uh, collaborations with the state government where we get live financial data from the government. And there are faculty who do data analytics on identifying anomalous patterns in the data and to be able to give this feedback to the government again for decision making uh, in terms of the financial uh, data that is produced in this in the state 
and we also have efforts on uh, groups of a group of faculty are also working on uh, initiatives in smart transport and smart cities in fact uh, uh, very recently about a couple of months back uh, one of the technology innovation hubs in the country called tihan which is located at iit hyderabad uh, inaugurated one of the first uh, test beds for autonomous navigation inside the iit hyderabad campus so in addition to these uh, uh, projects uh, all the faculty at iit hyderabad strive to publish their research in high impact conferences and journals across the world because at the end of the day uh, there are multiple levels of impact an academic institution needs to have of course project impact to help the society uh, impact on training students that are industry ready but also to ensure that india is in the global map in terms of research at the highest level and these publications uh, aim to ser serve that particular purpose maybe i'll highlight a few specific uh, projects before i talk about the pedagogical size uh, side of our efforts uh, one of the recent efforts is by a colleague of mine dr shiv govind singh uh, who developed an ai powered uh, low cost point of care covid testing kit uh, which was in fact tested with uh, patients at the esic hospital in hyderabad uh, this test kit could provide results in 20 minutes and it's something very cheap and could be deployed at a very large uh, very large scale one of my other colleagues uh, works on embedded ai and he's developed a system for uh, a device in particular to be able to monitor ecg data in real time and use ai and machine learning algorithms to be able to identify and predict markers for cardiovascular disease and in fact an embedded ai startup has emerged out of his efforts uh, which we hope will be successful in the in the years to come and while i talked about a few system level efforts application level efforts say in smart uh, security and surveillance in agriculture in healthcare uh, both covid and otherwise uh, it's also important for an academic institution to do foundational research in ai and machine learning and we have faculty who do that to uh, to do fundamental research in ai and machine learning and one of the efforts that has received attention and has been adopted around the world is one of the works that's done by our group here at iit hyderabad where we work on explainable ai i know that question came up and uh, for an effort like race uh, responsible ai i think uh, in fact the niti aayog's uh, national strategy on responsible ai highlights explainable ai as a very very important dimension uh, in in being able to generate trust in these ai models and this particular system that's been developed tries to use causal principles to explain deep learning models and a similar such method that was developed a, two, a couple of years ago is being used around the world to explain the decisions of deep neural network models including for uh, explaining the decisions of covid prediction in chest x-ray images so beyond these research efforts i as i mentioned one of the key uh, motivations for the ai department is to skill people in a holistic perspective to ai so there are various programs that are offered uh, from that perspective by the ai department at iit hyderabad Uh, the btec in ai was a landmark hallmark hallmark program uh, that was started at iit hyderabad in the country the third in the world to the best of our knowledge and uh, it has attracted significant talent in fact uh, a lot the admission is through the joint entrance exam the je uh, admission uh, exam and we've had students who could have got computer science at iit hyderabad who chose the ai program at uh, at iit hyderabad which probably speaks about the demand for such undergraduate programs in the country too and many of the faculty in the department have been involved in um, proliferating the curriculum be designed in helping many other institutions design their own btech in ai or btech in data science curricula across the country we also offer uh, offer a masters in ai since 2017 and the purpose of the masters in ai program rather than just be a specialization in ai and say in the computer science uh, department or any other department is that uh, today once again ai is being adopted by people from different departments so uh, while an mtech in computer science is, is accessible only to btech in computer science students uh, a lot of the students that want to do in a masters in ai come from different backgrounds perhaps a civil engineer perhaps a chem chemical engineer perhaps uh, a design uh, per a person with a design background and the purpose of offering a masters in ai to is to allow all of these students who have the right foundation who have the right passion to be able to enroll in these masters programs and once again graduate uh, with a perspective that's perhaps most more industry ready we also offer a phd exclusively in ai uh, which has received a good amount of response for exactly the same reason 
because there have been, in fact, one of the best responses we have received for the PhD in AI program is actually from the workforce, from the working professionals who probably missed the bus early in their years to uh, do a PhD, but now they work in AI related areas in the industry and now want to do a PhD in the AI for their own individual interests or perhaps uh, in business interests of their startups or companies or uh, whatever it may be. So the AI department allows students from different backgrounds to apply for a PhD in AI program and which we hope will expand in years to come to. Beyond this, we also offer a professional program in AI and emerging technologies, which is open to anybody. So for all the AI training programs that different IITs and IIITs in the country offer, uh, they're all offered to students that are enrolled in these institutions. Right? Unfortunately, that population is only a sliver of the entire student population in the country. So uh, realizing that need, we started a professional program in AI and emerging technologies where any student in the country can come and spend a summer with us about five to six weeks where they are trained in the latest and greatest of AI and emerging technologies and uh, hopefully will be more ready for uh, when, when they graduate or some of them even take a job break and come and do this to be able to transition into better roles in the industry. Unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, we could not have the immersive experience in the last couple of years, but we hope that once the situation improves, we'll again be able to host the students on campus to give them that immersive education experience uh, within the IIT campus. We also offer a master's program in data science, which is a real-time online program offered in the weekends for working professionals. We've actually been doing this for about six years now, much before COVID, uh, where we teach pe uh, people from the industry and help them get a MTech degree by not leaving their jobs at all. We've been doing this for the last uh, six years, in fact. And this has been a reasonably successful program where many working professionals have already graduated, transitioned to data science roles in the industry and also are in leadership roles at this point in time in different organizations across the country. Not just industry, but also government organizations like CDAC and many other organizations have enrolled in this particular program. We also offer what is called a minor in AI for our BTEC students, where somebody could be doing a BTEC in civil engineering but could get a minor in AI. Right? So because as all of you know, today, even in a topic like civil engineering, somebody could want to do say structural health monitoring where AI techniques are used to examine the structures of bridges or railway tracks or so on and so forth. So such a program allows a BTEC in civil engineering student to register for minors in AI to once again, get that perspective before they graduate and go for higher studies or the industry to practice their knowledge. So the BTEC in AI, which is, as I said, one of our uh, marquee programs has about 25 seats. It's a focused program that integrates multiple disciplines. As I already mentioned, computer science, electrical engineering, math, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, liberal arts, so on and so forth. And what the program tries to do is to give a very strong foundation in mathematics in the first year, especially uh, to uh, expose students to linear algebra, probability, calculus, stochastic processes, differential equations, control theory, so on and so forth and to also provide a core AI learning from different core subjects in AI. They do machine learning, deep learning in their second year, topics such as reinforcement learning in their third year, as well are mandated to take a few electives such as natural language processing, computer vision, speech processing during their undergrad, do some basic uh, theoretical courses in machine learning, as well as fulfill some elective credits in emerging technologies such as quantum computing or IoT, so on and so forth. They in fact also have a mandatory course in AI and ethics. And the hope is that when these students graduate out of the BTEC in AI, uh, they get a holistic perspective from all of these disciplines and uh, are hopefully more industry ready. And in fact, we also have uh, independent research projects as part of the curriculum where already students work on problems that come from the industry as part of their uh, coursework credits itself. So once again, the hope is that this will bridge the gap uh, which between what academia provides in AI and what the industry expects out of the students. We also have some core CC subjects so that the students are ready to write a gate exam in one of these uh, dimensions. One of the core aspects of uh, any uh, pedagogy and research in AI is the research facilities. So as uh, uh, Sri Jayesh Ranjanji mentioned in the beginning, so we have a state-of-the-art AI data center that has NVIDIA DGX1s and DGX2s, high-end workstations with distributed storage, and IIT Hyderabad is also privileged to be a part of uh, one of the first implementers of the National Supercomputing Mission, which has a 650 teraflop facility that hopefully will go live in about a month from now. 
So this facility of AI research is located in one of our uh, buildings here. So IIT Hyderabad also hosted, uh, is the host for the first NVIDIA AI technology center in the country. NVIDIA has similar centers in different parts of the world, but their first and only one in India at this point in, is in um, IIT Hyderabad. And what this enables is allows the faculty and students at IIT Hyderabad is to work with NVIDIA researchers, uh, as well as gain access to state-of-the-art state computational infrastructure at NVIDIA to work on problems of social impact. Currently, we work on our agriculture projects as well as on our projects to analyze text and social media tweets and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, IIT Hyderabad has been lucky to have a very close international partner in Japan since its very inception. Uh, Japanese uh, researchers, designers, architects have been involved in even design of buildings at IIT Hyderabad. And there's a very close relationship between an exchange of students and faculty between Japan and IIT Hyderabad. A couple of key projects uh, include AI for Agriculture, which is a collaborative project with the Telangana State Agricultural University, University of Tokyo in Japan, as well as, as, well as IIT Hyderabad, as well as on intelligent transport systems, uh, which is a collaborative effort between uh, researchers, researchers from Japan and faculty from uh, IIT Hyderabad. We have close academic collaborations with several universities in Japan, including University of Tokyo, uh, Raiken AIP, Nihon University, uh, we also collaborate a lot with industry in Japan, including AIST, Weather News, Takenaka, SMS Data, Teradrone, Ambeside You, Fujitsu, so on and so forth. And a significant number of companies from Japan uh, come for placements uh, to IIT Hyderabad to recruit uh, students, especially with expertise in, in AI. So we are very grateful to all the collaborators that uh, work with us in different aspects, government collaborators like the government of Telangana, Telangana State Police, State Agricultural uh, University, DRDO Labs, which has an extensive presence in Hyderabad, LV Prasad I Institute. Uh, we are lucky to have UN-based ICRISAT uh, at, at Hyderabad too, as well as multiple industry players like Microsoft, Intel, Honeywell, as well as uh, many other academic institutions that we collaborate with around the world. Okay. I'll stop there. I know it was I'm probably already over time. And uh, I'll invite uh, anybody to come and visit us once the situation improves. We'll be happy to host you and uh, show you around. Thank you again for uh, uh, allowing us to share this perspective with all of you today. Thank you. In fact, we can share this thing with your, uh, the academy, or we also have uh, Marichenna Reddy Institute of Public Administration, sir. MCRHRD, it's called. It's what it's called, and usually. Uh, during these training sessions for the IAS officer, they do have a session in Hyderabad too. They come over here. So we can offer them at that time also. It's whatever uh, you think would be convenient or feasible, we are open to that. So he worked as Vice Chancellor Jane, Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, sir. So he was referring to a module that he has introduced in JNTU that I said that every branch of student, it could be mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, every student should actually go through this AI module is what uh, he was saying sir probably i mean not for the government officials but for the students he was mentioning but that course can be made available even for the officers it has been developed and our police department actually deployed it uh, if you are interested sir i connect the startup to you uh, maybe i'll take your uh, coordinates or details email i'll connect the startup they can actually you know, uh, have this solution available to you. In fact, because it's a startup, sir, we are not actually asking for IP rights because at the end of the day, they need to actually grow. So that's the reason we are giving them an opportunity to try out their solution here in our state and giving all the required data and whatever, you know, support that they need from the government. So once actually, we are giving them a free hand to offer it to a, uh, any other uh, could be in the government or in the private sector also. We were discussing exactly on the same thing, discoms, you know, in fact, we have a startup that has this uh, energy meters, you know, energy reading meters, self-energy reading meters. And we are discussing with the discoms on how to actually take it forward, implementing it. We are open right now. I mean, they're not available on a portal, but we are actually preparing a, what you call a use case repository. 
which will be made available on our portal. But if, uh, I mean, we are actually, you know, conducting grand challenges, they're open to everybody. We want the entire ecosystem to develop, you know, not just Telangana. They, you know, like solutions should come out from anywhere in India. Yeah. yet come out with a certified course on that but that's one of our you know uh, initiatives that we want to take it forward but we were just waiting for niti ayo because recently niti ayo came out with a you know guidelines uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, procurement of these ai solutions ethics you know ethics framework they have come out with we we're waiting for that to happen so based on that now we might go ahead In fact, we are talking to two startups, you know, in this particular area. Insurance is, a, is one of the most important areas in agriculture. And uh, we have Satshore, a local Indian startup that's, a, that's actually, you know, have some solution that that's another one. Second one, there's a startup from US approached us saying that uh, they got some grant from, you know, Stanford uh, SRI, call, they call it Stanford Research Institute, and they want to actually develop a product that is suitable to the Indian context. So we are working on that, but they are uh, still in the initial stages. Yeah. Right, ma'am. And the last question uh, from Chokalinga Muthian. This is to Mr. Uh, Konala. Is the data set ready for oral cancer? Can you also let me know how the images are collected through mobile phone camera? Sure. Actually, we just kicked off the project. Uh, so we have... Uh, the uh, NGO called Grace Foundation that has five buses that is going all over Telangana, right? So hopefully in another uh, three, four months, right, we'll, we'll have, uh, we're just starting to deploy, right? Another three, four months, we'll have the data, right? Uh, I mean, he, he can follow up me or follow with me offline. I can give more details on how the actual, you know, uh, data is being collected with the phone and all that, right? So we, we take around nine images with the phone, right, at a high level, right? I can get into more details offline. Well, thanks very much to all our esteemed speakers for taking our precious time in joining us on AI Pe Chacha today. And many thanks to all our viewers for joining us, for viewing with their valuable suggestions and queries. That's all the time we have today. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you Thanks all. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Sure, actually we just kicked off the project. Uh, so we have uh, the uh, NGO called Grace Foundation that has five buses that is going all over Telangana, right? So hopefully in another uh, three, four months, right? We'll, we'll have, uh, we're just starting to deploy, right? Another three, four months we'll have the data, right? Uh, I mean, he, he can follow up me or follow with me offline. I can give more details on how the actual, you know, uh, data is being collected with the phone and all that, right? So, we, we take around nine images with the phone, like at a high level, right? I can get into more details offline. Well, thanks very much to all our esteemed speakers for taking our precious time in joining us on AI Pe Chacha today. And many thanks to all our viewers for joining us, for viewing with their valuable suggestions and queries. That's all the time we have today. Goodbye.